value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. We have two guests on the show today, and we're going to talk about Alberta, Canada, and separation. We have Martin Armstrong, the founder of Armstrong Economics, available online at armstrongeconomics.com. He's speaking to us from Florida. And we have Peter Downing, the CEO of the Alberta USA Foundation, online at ab51pac.com. He's speaking to us from Edmonton, Alberta. Martin, Peter, welcome to the Goddard Report. Thank you for inviting. Yeah, thank you very much, Jim. Martin, historically, what's happened when a section or sections of a country want to separate? Uh, Often they have just simply separated, like um, some of the the states separated, for example, uh, with the American Civil War. I mean, the South, when it it attempted to separate, then naturally that led to a war. But there were also other religious reasons and things of that nature that were involved. Uh, But uh, it, what we're really facing on a on a global scale is the separatism is not just Canada; it's it's rising everywhere. When the people of a country, Martin, are in the process of having Marxism, socialism, communism forced on them, is it natural to have parts of that country want to leave to find freedom? Yeah, I mean, you're seeing this in a lot of states in the U.S. I mean, people, um, I get, you know, emails from Oregon and and things of this nature where they want to separate and and, and join the next state over, um, we have a, a, a tremendous clash going on uh, between, I guess you can call it left and right, but um, the, the main difference is between the two that people don't appreciate um, is the right generally is, you leave me alone, I leave you alone. Whereas on the left, they tend to uh, feel that they are being suppressed by other people, therefore they have a right to suppress them so they have a better life. So it, it tends to be more of a um, everybody's got to do what I say or, you know, or that's it. So that's why you see these communist type things. I mean, this is, is really the third time there's been a major Marxist re- rebellion, I would say, uh, you had 1848, and you had like the 1917 period. <clears throat> uh, even Germany, with its hyperinflation, most people don't realize uh, that was because they had a revolution in 1918, which was a communist revolution. They even invited Russia to come in and please take Germany. So, I mean, people withdrew money. Uh, that's why the hyperinflation took place. I mean, it's basically everybody just lost confidence in the government's period. Martin, historically, are there warning signs that people should watch for to tell them it's time to leave a country? I think we've kind of reached it already. Um, <clears throat> I mean, right now in Britain, uh, I mean, I've been talking with, you know, people in government, they're back and forth. I mean, it's just... It, the gauntlet's been thrown down. Um, you know, it, I, I, it really has to, you gotta question what's going on here. I mean, you have some of these leaders that are moving absolutely without any democratic, uh, process whatsoever uh, against everything that the people stand for. I mean, you see it in, in Australia, New Zealand. I mean, Britain, Boris Johnson is basically, 
uh, said that we need, you know, it's never going to go back to normal, and he's calling it, he wants to basically join uh, Schwab's World Economic Forum in the Great Reset. So, I mean, it, it's crazy. Um, but, it, it, again, that's the way the left tends to be, and it's like our way, that's it, and you're going to, to do what I tell you. And he's just allocated, you know, he wants to allocate 60 million pounds to force people to comply with his rules, wearing masks and things of this nature. I mean, it's it's just insane. Peter, what options does the province of Alberta have going forward? Um, yeah, it's a great question, uh, Jim. And uh, I've been talking about this publicly, because um, you know, Albertans do need to know what our options are. Um it was uh, Sun Tzu who said it clearly, is that when you find yourself at the intersection of crossroads, you need to find an ally. So Albertans can look, uh, and I think we've got four choices at this point. Is um, is it Ottawa? Well, no, the status quo is not tolerable. Russia, again, uh, more or less like China. Um, so the, the question is, do we join the United States? Is there a connection there? Is there economic integration? Can uh, Alberta... Uh, coupled with Texas rival OPEC, what's the quality of life going to be? Will it bring back development of the oil sands and uh, our natural resources where we have a government in Ottawa who is uh, completely, you know, they, 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 they're open, they want to shut it down, and we have uh, a premier and a government here in Alberta that uh, doesn't have the uh, power or the desire to uh, affect monk change and to protect or advance our interests. So um, it, it really is the status quo or one of the other options. Um, Alberta joined, you know, becoming its own country. We simply don't have an army and uh, we don't have trade packs. So, um, and, and we've seen how Donald Trump is, uh, you know, we'd be at the mercy of both Ottawa and, uh, and uh, Washington when it comes to trade. So um, I, I think our best option is to, uh, is to hold a referendum on separation. And uh, if it's successful, uh, start negotiations uh or a closer relationship with the USA. Peter, is there a plan A and a plan B, and why are you focusing on Alberta joining the U.S.? Well, plan A uh, was the, the Wexit movement. It was the, um, it, it was the idea that Alberta would become its own country or uh, join up in a confederation with other like-minded provinces like Saskatchewan um, and, to a lesser extent, B.C. and Manitoba uh, for common uh, resource protection uh, and market access interests. But um, we, we've seen that there is, over the past year, that it really has been Alberta uh, that's led the way. And um, the, the level of support and interest in the other provinces just haven't been there. So the idea, of, again, of Alberta being its own country doesn't seem uh, tenable. And so Plan B is, uh, is looking at the American option. Martin, historically, what do you think would be the best option for Alberta? Well, I... <clears throat> I think, you know, the U.S. is also in the same kind of quagmire politically uh, that Canada is. I mean, it depends upon the election all the time. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I testified before Congress back in 96 on, on taxes, and they were asking me how come no American firm got any of the, the contracts in China to do, you know, the Yellow River Dam, etc. And I, I said, because we tax worldwide income. I said, Germany does not. So Germany can go in there, and they're already 40% less in bidding on a project than any American company. And they just look at you like, really? Yes, this is the problem, okay? And I said, secondly, then the politics keeps changing. So if you look at the ta you know, the chart of taxes, I mean, it's been as high as 94% with Reagan, it went down to 28%. Uh, it's now at 37. I mean, it's like the, the chart pattern of a schizophrenic. I mean, I personally think that taxes should not be allowed to be changed uh, simply because somebody has a majority of 50.7%. It should be more of a of a at least a, a two thirds uh, vote. I mean, requirement. I mean, it, they keep changing the economy back and forth They're like a yo yo. Uh, and th and this is why companies leave. I mean, just put it in your personal context. 
would you sign a lease to rent an apartment or something where the landlord, if he needs money, can change the, the price at any time he wants? And everybody goes, well, no, I wouldn't do that. Okay, well, that's what we have. So why would a company open up a, a, a plant based on, okay, fine, taxes right now are 25%, and then next year they're at 35 It's too much of a risk. So that's why these companies move offshore. It's not because they're paying somebody $10 an hour versus 15 Uh It's a lot more complicated than just that. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's, you know, you know, we, we have this political problem, and it's it's global. I mean, all these governments are kind of schizophrenic in many ways. Uh, Alberta's got problems um, because of the same thing in in, in Ottawa. <clears throat> but then there's there's a, this other issue, and that is that <clears throat> when they created the central bank. Back in 1907, they realized it was capital flow problems internally. So there was a 1906, or, you know, San Francisco earthquake. All the insurance companies were in New York. So they had to ship all this money over there. So then <clears throat> what happened was banks in New York were going bust. So they set up the Federal Reserve with 12 branches. Each branch was independent. So interest rates would be 6% in one place and 5% in another, depending upon if they needed to attract money or they had excess. When Roosevelt came in for World War II, he said one you know, size fits all. So he usurped all the rates uh, into Washington, and then they never put this stuff back. So Canada had the same problem, <clears throat> that... You know, they start raising interest rates because there's real estate speculation going on in Toronto. Meanwhile, the commodity side, guys are being put into bankruptcy. Uh, it's not all the same economy. And Alberta is <clears throat> more commodity-based than Toronto. So it really needs a completely different management style and appreciation of its economy, which does not take place. Martin, economically, what do you think would be the best option for Alberta? In this particular environment, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure you really need an army, per se. I mean, because Alberta would be landlocked anyhow. So the only people that would be invading would be Canadians, really. Um, I mean, maybe do some sort of a joint <clears throat> uh, protection agreement or something with the United States, that would be fine. But given all the craziness going on, uh, <clears throat> Alberta maybe could become its own entity and do like a lot of these other countries are, are doing. They're selling citizenships and things of this nature. I mean, if you sold a citizenship for, say, okay, fine, and, and you put in reasonable, guaranteed uh, things that, okay, Taxes are not going to be changed. You open a plant here, you do something, we'll give you an absolute guarantee, no tax changes for, for 20 years or whatever. you attract businesses from all over the world. We'll have more with Peter Downing and Martin Armstrong right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Peter Downing and Martin Armstrong. Peter, if Alberta was to get the same powers as Quebec, would there still be a good case for separation? I think that the it, it would if there was the same the same powers that Quebec has uh, with the the quality of life that we have historically 
enjoyed or believe that we're entitled to the, within the Alberta advantage, um, I think that would be one case. But uh, we've also with the craziness, if you look at the powers that the Quebec, uh, Quebec has politically, but even um, in terms of the personal freedoms and the levels of taxation, and, and uh, now we're seeing uh, similar, uh, again, it's being validated, but um, similar types of reports coming out of places like Rimouski, um, uh, similar to the Victoria, Australia lockdowns, uh, the, the new, uh, again, the Quebec health minister is coming out and threatening their citizens. Uh, the, the creepy guy who said, you know, you gotta follow these rules because I can be a really bad boy. And that, that's public stuff. I mean, that's not me making it up. That's just what he, what he said publicly on CTV news. So, uh, um, I, I think there's that other side of it too. And touching on what Martin was saying is, um, with, since at least the FLQ crisis, in uh, 1970, the 1970 in Quebec, the October crisis, where uh, you had um, Trudeau, uh, number one, do the martial law. And uh, ever since that time, the politicization of the police and the military has only increased, not so much for its external capabilities, but a lot of people are saying, and a lot of people are concerned that the Canadian military is becoming more of an internal security force than, than it is in terms of its uh, expeditionary or its external capabilities outside of the country. So those are really concerning things. And um, and again, touching on uh, Klaus Schwab and the Great Reset, and, uh, you know, he says himself, coming from his pen, the trilemma that we're facing right now is you can have globalization, nationalization, or democracy. Pick any two, but you can't have three. And uh, we see the alliance between uh, China and uh, the EU, Canada being into that mix. Uh, on the global side, and uh, you've got the USA and other countries that are going national, so uh, nationalist. And um, so I, I think in an ideal world, yeah, Alberta would be its own country, but uh, I just don't think those conditions exist. Peter, if Alberta was to make a move to leave Canada, do you think the First Nations governments would be on board? I think some would and some wouldn't. Uh, when you look at the governments, and, and I've... I have a, a unique perspective because I policed on, uh, when I served with the RCMP, I policed on uh, several different reserves, uh, First Nations reserves. And, uh, I mean, if you want to take a look at socialism, just go spend some time on those reserves. Um, so there, there is a level of corruption, and there is, um, you know, some, some are better than others. Um, and, and some would want to join the USA for their own interests, their own reasons, and their own benefits. But uh, I think when it comes to... The first step is simply to have that referendum on separation and, and to be successful in that. When it comes to negotiations on, on either side, if the people of Alberta decide that they want to join the USA or they want to open negotiations with the U.S. government, well, then that, that's a powerful ally that we get to bring to the table. Martin, could Alberta be part of an upcoming balkanization of North America? Uh, <clears throat> yes, and look, I think that we are looking at dramatic political changes around the globe. Uh, like I said, if you, you see, you know, a lot of people know what's taking place in Victoria, um, but you should look what Boris Johnson's done in Britain just this week. Uh, I mean, in his speeches, basically saying, look, you know, this we're never going back to normal. This is, this is the new norm, and he's, he is basically funding the police, which is they're also becoming more military um, active. I mean, you know, there is this real clash between t- these two philosophies. And uh, you have, the, you know, the, the, the World Economic Forum in league with, with the Gates Foundation and, and, and others, and they think that they need this whole thing to, to be pushed to save the planet. I mean, they even put a clock up in New York City saying we got seven years left to live, you know. Um, and, and none of the science supports it. I mean, they, they don't even want to talk about anything before 1850, you know. Uh, how did the earth warm up after ice ages? It, it's all, you know, they don't address any of that. Anyway, it brings it up all their conspiracy theorists, and, and they never address any of the facts. But this is This is simply their agenda. And um, I, uh, I'd like to interject there if I could. I think a simple explanation for it is that guys like Bill Gates have a lot of, uh, you know, they have a huge market share when it comes to selling to government, selling their tech, 
selling their vaccines for problems that are real or contrived, and they make a lot more money uh, taking tax money directly from governments uh, than they do competing on the open market. You know, this whole thing about trying to uh, put in digital IDs and things of this nature, he's testified before the UN and had his wife go to the G20 that we need to eliminate all currency and go digital. And you can bet who's going to get a piece of the action is going to be the tech companies on every transaction in the world. 100%. Martin, what would it take to have you want to move to Alberta? I think basically, you know, you're looking at um, stability in taxes, and that's the primary thing. I mean, uh, you, you can't have this stuff constantly going back and forth, back and forth. Um, I mean, I have to worry about whether or not, uh, I mean, I mean, we're an international company. I can't even get any of my staff from Asia or Europe here. Everybody's blocked. They canceled all their, all their visas. Um, you know, it, just trying to do business anymore is getting to be absolutely crazy. I mean, and how do you plan for the future when you don't even know what the politics are going to be five years from now? So I think there is a reasonable shot, um, you know, to look at some of these concerns. I mean, Macedonia was able to get companies there because they offered them 20-year guaranteed deals on taxation. Um, <clears throat> so this is the biggest complaint I get from our international clients. It's like, you know, where do we go next? So who's going to, what country is going to be safe? What not, what ones will not? Um, they're, they're using this COVID uh, for to expand power. There, I mean, I have you know inside documentation from Britain where they're talking about using lockdowns in the future to protect the planet. I mean, this is crazy. I mean, the whole thing. I mean, it's no worse than the flu on on a death scale. And you look at this, and you know they've been able to shut down international travel tourism by 80%. Uh, and you, you're looking at everything here. It's it's just, you know, the whole nine yards. People are, are don't work. And who's getting hurt the worst? I mean, the upper people who can work from home on computers or something like that, they can at least still survive. But then you have another whole group of people that have to actually, you know, do something physically for their employment, from waitressing to to mining to you know whatever they can't work from home uh and they're they're just wiping out you know people on a global scale. Peter Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is threatening to use bill sixty nine to kill the proposed Alaska to Alberta rail line that President Trump's in favor of. Could this move put the Yukon and b c in play to join Alberta? I think it's going to put, it's going to put anybody in play, anybody who stands to benefit from that. And, and obviously nobody rejoices in any short term loss, um, or, or loss of hope, um, that, that those people and people in Alberta would experience. Uh, in long term, it, it would, I, and I watched that interview when Justin Trudeau was talking about that and he looked nervous. Um, because he, I think he knows that if he, he's kind of in a bad position one way or another, is if he accepts it, accepts it, well, America's going to look like the savior. If he uh, rejects it and shuts it down, then more people are just going to want to join the United States. Uh, in Alberta, I can't really speak for Yukon or the BC because I don't live there, but uh, I can tell you right now, people in Alberta were super, super pumped to uh, see that, that railway get approved um, or that presidential permit get approved. So um, Justin Trudeau is just going. I mean, it's just going to, it's going to increase the separatist sentiment even more. He's on to the whole World Economic Forum agenda. That's the whole issue. Uh, ab- ab- absolutely, he is. He is one of the first one. He was, you know, I-, I think you pointed out, and we all know, he was the first one to talk about the post-national citizenship, and. Uh, you know, whether it's him or Christia Friedland, who's, again, I'm quoting out of uh, Schwab's book, COVID-19, The Great Reset, is um, when it says we have to have this 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 green, just uh, restart to our economy. And when Jason Kenney is saying that, uh, you know, we have to uh, prepare, uh, we have to prepare 
uh, for war, treat this fire or make preparations for war, that kind of language, uh, which is just a justification for raising taxes. It's the political and the social justification for that. So it all comes right out of the book there. They're all singing from the same playbook and, um, the Trump administration in the United States, they're, you know, they're, they're not. Uh, they, they have removed themselves. They're continuing to remove themselves, um, and decoupling themselves from the, uh, the, uh, maybe Martin can correct me, the Bretton Woods Pact since 1945 because they are more energy uh, independent now and they don't want to be uh, protecting everybody's commerce uh, on on this on this you know, global sea lanes, which was only relevant and, and I'm quoting Zihan here, um, you know, to to fight the communists and to bring all those uh, the the neighbors of uh, the Soviets into alignment with the, with the U.S., including China, back in 1970. So um, again, you're seeing that pre-1945 or that pre or the pre-World War II isolationism in the U.S. happen again, and it's going to hurt a lot of people who benefited from that global, uh, global, international, um, you know, those highly efficient but super fragile uh, supply chains. Peter, if Alberta separates, how could we be confident that there would be good people in power? Yeah, it's always a question, isn't it? And, uh, I mean, maybe I'm getting spiritual and philosophical here, but I think that people are going to elect, uh, you know, the politicians are only going to be, rep- they're going to reflect society. They're not going to be representatives of the people, but they're going to, re- they're, they reflect society at large. And I mean, you know, I, I don't want to get into anybody's personal life here, but I, I noticed like a, a big difference from, I think it was early 2000s that the big scandal was that John Edwards, a Democrat, cheated on his wife and had a kid, uh, with his mistress. Um, you know, that would, that would be, you know, just par for the course or normal today. So, I, I mean, who, who do you want? And, and again, I'm, I'm talking to libertarians here, so it's, uh, you know, I'm going to try and choose my words carefully. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, the, the people are a reflection of the values. And, the, and so if you look at these politicians that we elect and the things that we tolerate in them, or whether it's, you know, the member of parliament who goes to, uh, you know, goes to Ottawa for, say, 17 years and cheats on his wife. And, and I just think, like, if you cheat on the wife, you're going to cheat on the voters. So, um, again, maybe we have to have a rethink of uh, what kind of, you know, who are we electing? And what standard what standard of person are we electing? Um, it's not a religious test, but I think it's a common values test. We'll have more with Peter Downing and Martin Armstrong right after the break. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Peter Downing and Martin Armstrong. Martin, do you think that COVID-19 and oppression are being used to fulfill the climate change narrative and usher in globalism? Yes, I mean, there's. I don't think there's any question about it. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the CDC even came out and, and said the total of all the people that died, uh, only six percent actually died of COVID. Uh, it's been, you know, down here in Florida, we're <clears throat> more of a Republican state, and it's been much more free and open. Um, it, so it's it, we haven't really had the the drastic, uh, crazy lockdowns that you have up north. But uh, even here, I mean, you, you can't pay these hospitals for if somebody has COVID. And um, it, it just it's just really excessive. You had um, a guy that was killed on a motorcycle, and his, and his parents then saw his name published in the list of dying from COVID. I mean, they called the, you know, Fox News and they went to investigate and they said, oh, they, geez, so I don't know how that happened. We'll take them off. Well, how many others are there? Um, it's just nonsense. I mean, uh, you know, I put on our blog, I had just gone over to the ER 
uh, myself because I thought they would do testing there, not for COVID or whatever, and they and they stuck me in a COVID wing for two days. And you have to have two tests to get out of it. That's got to be negative. And I said, why two? You know, I said, because you know they don't work to begin with. And then every doctor I say, look, I've been tested for COVID five times and nothing ever. And then, then they all laugh. They go, yeah, but the tests don't work anyhow. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, the whole thing's a joke. It's really a joke. I mean, um, I don't know what else to say about it. It's Schwab, definitely uh, being used for, for, for political purposes. Klaus Schwab points out, uh, the, 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 their numbers of the World Economic Forum is 0.006%. Martin. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. just, the whole thing is just one giant fraud. And <clears throat> be locking up people because they don't have a mask on. I mean, I mean, you can look on YouTube. I mean, even Fauci came out in the beginning and said masks aren't going to protect you. Uh, now all of a sudden everybody has to have a mask. He says it's a symbol of uh, good citizenship. Yeah, I mean, otherwise you go to jail. <laughs> well, I think uh, that's uh, that's you know talk about who you know maybe this doesn't sound nice and in terms of revolutions it's it's and I'm not calling for revolution. Um, and I think we can escape our situation peacefully, but the uh, the politicians the, the the level talk about fraud the level of breach of trust from our politicians is enormous. It's just absolutely enormous. And um, you know whether whether we end up as a country or own state, whatever the case may be, uh, we we have to seriously uh, prevent this kind of stuff from ever happening again and uh, make an example of these people. I, I've investigated many different types of governments, and the, one of the best ones I've ever found was out of Genoa. And the head of the Doge, or like the president, rotated on an annual basis. So it's kind of like Trump in the sense that what I trust about Trump is he goes back to the private sector. So he's not going to do any crazy laws that would be against himself. Whereas the rest of these people are just career politicians. They walk out, and they're just taken care of for life. They don't care. They're always exempt themselves. So, I mean, I think that's the real difference. Um, <clears throat> as long as you are, you have some skin in the game, as they say, then it's okay. So I think <clears throat> the problem is the lack of term limits. If somebody was in government to do something, one term, and you're back out. That's it. Yeah. Um I mean, people don't realize you see all these heads from Goldman Sachs then become treasury secretary or advisor or whatever. The reason, which is never published, uh, is very simple. You now are going to become treasury secretary. You ha <clears throat> you have to divest yourself of all stock that would be a conflict of interest. So then they have to sell all their stock from Goldman Sachs. All right. But because you're forced to do so, they're, it's all tax-free. So they go there, <clears throat> like Robert Rubin or, or any of these guys, you'll notice that they're there for a year and a half, two years, and they leave. That's it. Everything they've made for the entire life is now tax-free. Martin, we're heading into the second wave of lockdowns. How long can it take people to wake up to the fact they're being oppressed? It's rising um, quite significantly, I think, on a global scale. And <clears throat> honestly, it, our computer is showing you're going to see significant rise in, in civil unrest coming in next year. I, I think by you're, you're looking at <clears throat> uh, from March to about May, it's just going to start increasing sharply. I mean, these people are, are just, they've had enough of this stuff. Peter, if Alberta was set to join the U.S., do you think some Canadians would move to Alberta and some would leave the province? Yeah, definitely. I think that you, just as we're seeing the clash between the left and the right uh, and everything that we've been talking about is, yeah, I, it, the comments that I see in the letters and the messages I get, whether it's, uh, you know, this makes me sick, I would leave Alberta, uh, and other people said, yeah, I'll move to Alberta in a heartbeat. So, uh, yeah, you're 100% bang on there. Martin, could the destruction of Canada's economy be an open door for China to go on a buying spree? Um, well, a, a lot of China investment is not necessarily always from the government. Um, there are uh, massive cash that has been around, 
and they've been funneling out through Bitcoin in various different ways. Uh, so it was the Chinese individuals buying real estate up in Miami and New York and, 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 and all the big cities. You can tell they're individuals. Uh, it's not government doing this sort of thing. Uh, and they always buy the trophies. So they go to the highest priced areas. Uh, and, <clears throat> but, you know, I think China is backing off from international investment. Uh, <clears throat> they've been, you know, they're getting bashed a lot and they're starting to pull back. And I don't blame them for that. I mean, you have to see how this is, is, is working. I mean, a lot of the information that's been coming out <clears throat> in the investigations, uh, into the 2016 election has shown that, I mean, the FBI documents have come out and CIA documents showing that the even a three page memo just came out warning Comey that, look, this whole thing with Russia Gate was made up by Hillary. I mean, <clears throat> This has been going on for quite some time. I've never seen it this bad. Uh, but, um, you know, you have to wonder. I mean, if you're Russia or China, do you really want to get involved in this stuff or you start pulling back? You're being bashed all the time just for political points. That's it. Martin, if you lived in Canada and Marxism, socialism, communism took power, would you stay in Canada or leave? And if you did, where would you go? I think the only place to go, honestly, is where communism fell, ironically. Uh, all my friends from Eastern Europe that did come over here, um, they're, like, disgusted. They said, this is exactly what I, I fled away from. And um, it, it's just – so I think, like, Southeast Asia is probably uh, <clears throat> one of the best spots right now. I mean, but – this is, it's affecting everybody on a global scale. Peter, same question for you. If Marxism, socialism, and communism take over in Canada, where would you move to? Or would you stay? Uh, I'd, pro- I'd probably stay put. I'd stay put. Um, and, uh, you know, you talk about communism falling or places that are able to um, escape it or, or block it or to resist it. And um, I, I, I think uh, echoing Martin saw. I don't think this is a problem you can run away from. Uh, it's one that you, you know, and, and I've got skin in the game. So uh, I think this is, uh, we, we do the things that we can. We're working on our plan B right now. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we pray that uh, through effort and uh, through, uh, through a bit of God's help, uh, we'll be able to come out on top. Peter, what would the steps be for Alberta to leave Canada? So we need to organize a referendum on separation. Um, and traditionally it's, well, I, I guess according to the Supreme Court rules, um, it, it's got to be initiated by a provincial government. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we have a, we have a premier right now in, in Edmonton who is, uh, set against it. F- funny enough, he, uh, he was a Bilderberg attendee as well. And, uh, he's been, uh, he's been singing off the same playbook, uh, uh Klaus Schwab's playbook as well. So, uh, we don't expect anything to come out of him. I think that what we have to do is, uh, here now we gotta get the referendum as soon as possible. We have to put the political pressure on, uh, the United Conservative Party to, to basically make those MLAs fear for their job the next time around and, and uh, hopefully they, they do what's in their own self-interest to, uh, have a leadership review. And, uh, you know, I think there's, uh, there's some movements coming together for that purpose. There's still a lot of work to do, but, um, we gotta get that referendum. Martin, we keep hearing about the deep state swamp in the U.S. Is standing up for Alberta and freedom likely to expose a deep state swamp in Canada? I think, I mean, this is part of the problem. If you really look at the European Union, they deliberately constructed it so it's anti-democratic. The commission doesn't stand for any election. The head of the state is picked by the other heads of state. They never have to stand for election. The people get to elect only the parliament, which has no power to overrule the commission. Um, it's a facade that makes it appear as though they still have democracy, but it, it's really quite a joke. I mean, this is what is part of this agenda. The, 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 they are saying that to fight climate change, we need one government, and that should be the United Nations. So the United Nations should dictate to the entire world 
what has to be done to save the climate. And there's a proposal that the UN wants to have a 10% tax on everybody in the world to fund them. Uh, these, these are their dreams. All right. Um, but they are working steadily for that. And they have a lot of, of people supporting them from Bill Gates and, and all the rest of them. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we call them the billionaire, ba- you know, dropouts, but, uh, unfortunately, it's a lot of people with a lot of money, and they have these ideas, um, and they're funding them. Uh, so, I mean, I, you know, obviously against, you know, George Soros and Bill Gates. I mean, uh, it's, I, I know Charles Schwab, I was invited to his brand, to his movie opening in New York. Um, he's an academic, you know, and academics are just, you know, all in theory. Uh, I don't think he has any practical idea of to, to accomplish what they're talking about. You have to change humanity. Uh, and that's why communism failed. You can't change humanity. You know, knock this stuff off. Um, it, it's more than just, you know, suppressing people and taking everything they have and putting in laws. I mean, I went behind the Berlin Wall before it fell. Went and visited a friend's and your cousin, and she would speak freely with us only when nobody was even remotely close. As soon as anybody came close, she'd point to the building and said, this is a pure, you know, pure, they take such wonderful care of us. And as soon as they left, she, you know, called them all kinds of names. <laughs> um, I mean, but this is, I mean, I saw what it really was before, and they're doing the same thing. Uh, you're not allowed, freedom of speech is taken down. I mean, you look at YouTube and Facebook. You know, anything they personally disagree with, they're taking off. Um, and it has to agree with uh, the WHO out of the United Nations. If it disagrees with them, remove it. So I mean, it's just it's just crazy. But this is the world that they are creating, eliminating free speech as much as possible. Peter, I know you have to run. Uh, so one last question. Are you optimistic going forward? Yeah, I'm optimistic because I can't afford not to be. Optimism is uh, it's that positive energy towards a goal. And, uh, you know, I, I have a different perspective on it, um, you know, from, from my past career. And uh, and uh, we just got to keep moving forward, keep moving forward, keep moving forward. And, uh, again, I think that we, we have a lot going for us right now in terms of the times, the circumstances, the politics, our resources. And I think that our window of opportunity isn't huge. But, uh, we have to do the things that we can do. Um, the, uh, the, Alber- the Alberta conservative, uh, movement is, uh, going strong. The independence movement's going strong. We're, we're in the process of making those two things dovetail, bringing together all the people who are either looking for a fair deal in Alberta, uh, they, they want independence or they want to join the U.S., bringing all those folks under one roof and then, uh, just taking it to the next step to bring it onto, uh, a national stage. Peter, uh, thank you so much for speaking with us. We'll let you run away here, and we'll give your website again just before the show wraps up. Uh, thanks a lot for being on the Goddard Report. Martin, do you see optimism ahead for the people of Alberta, Canada, and the U.S.? Well, I think what you're going to find is is it's not just Alberta that's looking at separate um, separation. We have the same thing going on in the United States. I think it would be the South against the North. You have California, Washington, Oregon saying if Trump wins, they're going to leave. Um, so you have separatist movements everywhere. Uh, you go to Germany, it's Bavaria against, you know, the Northern Prussian area. I mean, Italy, it's North against South. I mean, you're seeing the separatist movements everywhere. You're seeing the... Islands wanting to leave from from Scotland, and then you had Scotland versus England. I mean, this one size fits all, and this unfortunately the left, this view that they must prevail and there can't be anything that disagrees with them, that type of attitude actually fuels the very separatist movements. Martin, we're hearing Ireland, Australia, now Quebec and Ontario are imposing draconian laws on the people. Can it be stopped, or is it part of a cycle that's hard to turn back? It's hard to turn back, but I think what this is going to lead to is just a lot more civil unrest next year. 
Um, we may even see some in, movements towards revolutions even. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. And in and, and all honesty, um, as you know, I've dealt with governments around the world for 40 years. And <clears throat> I w- could have walked into any head of state. And I say, if you don't do this, 25 million people will die tomorrow. And they would say, yeah, well, maybe you're wrong. Okay. Because in politics, it's very simple. If I wanted to run for president and I'd say, vote for me because I saved your job. And then you're going to look at me. I didn't even know I was going to lose it. You know, we're just making this stuff up. It's much better you lose your job. Then I say, vote for me. I'll get the guy that did it. So after working with them for 40 years, I have never seen a government willing to risk current um, status for a possible, you know, prevention of something that might happen. They always want it to happen. They love crisis. So this is very unusual. The fact you have Boris Johnson and, and Andrews in Australia and all these places where you're seeing politicians becoming very aggressive against the people there's no possible way they're going to be reelected. So why are they doing this? They would not do this unless, in my opinion, they're bribed. They're being paid off by this vast money uh, reservoir from these billionaires, and there's been a number of, of people that have come out and said they were offered bribes and stuff from, from Africa, behind the Iron Curtain. It used to be, I mean... I think they're paid, being paid off. That's it, because they were nobody in their rational mind would do this. I can't see Boris Johnson doing this to people and actually expect that he would be reelected. Yeah. So either elections are all going to be canceled and they won't be exist anymore, or you're talking about they're just being bribed and they ride off into the sunset and enjoy an absolute, you know, <clears throat> comfort living for the rest of their life. Martin, have you read COVID-19, The Great Reset? I read part of it. I mean, um, I, I, know, I knew it was coming out. I saw some advanced stuff on it. I mean, it was, it's just a joke. I understand where he's coming from. He's always had this socialistic idea from the very beginning. Um, Schwab was involved with this, his ideas that corporations should not care about their, you know, their stockholders. They should care about stakeholders, and stakeholders are everybody in the community. So therefore, he he's transformed them into an obligation to society, not the shareholder. Well, then why do you have public corporations selling stock if they're not going to make money? Why would somebody put their money in there? Um, you know, it, it, it reflects somebody that doesn't understand the economy. And one thing I think it's important to understand, yes, he's calling it the fourth, you know, industrial, you know, revolution. Nobody ever sat down and created any of the others. All right? One guy invents a steam engine, and it just becomes viral, and they start, and next thing you know, you have trains, etc. Government didn't decide that. Government didn't invent the steam engine. All right? Then you had the same thing with, with the combustion engine. All right. Uh, in fact, in Britain, they tried to prevent it. Um, if you had a car, you had to hire a guy with a horn and a flag that would walk before your car and say, well, you know, warning, a car is coming. Um, in New Jersey, there was a law that if your car frightened a horse, you had to pull it off to the side of the road. If the horse was still frightened, you were required to disassemble it. I mean, these were laws that these people passed because they were anti-cars, anti-combustion engine. Why? Because they were being paid by the people that made the horse and buggies. It's always corrupt. Simple as that. So, you know, to this idea that you can now create by law this fourth, you know, evolution is just absolutely nuts. I mean, this is Marxism all over again. You know, Marx basically had this idea that you could create the economy by taking everything away from everybody and regulating it. This is the same exact thing. 
Nobody's ever been able to do it. And they're going to fail again. Martin, could this pandemic been planned years in advance? Oh, it clearly was. I can tell you absolutely without question. <clears throat> the World Economic Forum sold all its stock at the top. Bill Gates started selling stock in December. That's part of the record at the SEC. And <clears throat> Schwab even told somebody a virus was coming. This was planted. And if you just look at the facts, Fauci was investigating this exact type of virus, trying to make it um, move to humans. When a whole bunch of scientists objected, he was shut down, but he sent it off to Wuhan. So it went to Wuhan, and then suddenly it appears over there. Um, look, I mean, you just pay somebody a bribe who's working in the lab, take some out and dump it on the street, will you? Okay, fine. How much are you going to give me? Give you a hundred grand. Done. Uh, I don't think it was China. China certainly didn't release it itself. Um, why would it do that on its own people? It doesn't, you know, made no sense. Uh, so this is, um, I think it was manufactured in a lab. Fauci was definitely involved in that <coughs> uh, type of research before. He was told to shut it down. So all of a sudden it appears perfectly on time, perfectly on time. And they started selling their stock as early as December. So uh, this is all contrived. Martin, where can people follow you? Uh, you can go to our website at armstrongeconomics.com. Um, and <clears throat> you can see from there you can even go to our system, which is Socrates, which is a completely... Um, artificial intelligence system that writes its own reports on over a thousand markets around the world, so it's nobody's personal opinion. Martin, thank you so much for being on the Goddard Report. Well, thank you for inviting me. And we'd like to thank Peter Downing as well for being on the Goddard Report. He had to uh, run just a little bit early here due to family reasons. My guests have been Martin Armstrong, founder of Armstrong Economics, available at armstrongeconomics.com. He was speaking to us from Florida. And Peter Downing, the CEO of the Alberta USA Foundation, online at ab51pac.com. He was speaking to us from Edmonton, Alberta. If you have any questions for the show or our guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Find us on Twitter at talkdigitalnetwork.com. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.